Let's now check out some of the top stories we tracked at the courtrooms. We begin with the report that the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has adjourned until April the 30th a suit seeking the sack of Senate President Bukola Saraki, the Speaker, House of Representatives Yakubu Dogara, and 52 other lawmakers. An advocacy group, Legal Defense and Assistance Project, LEADAP, had dragged the lawmakers to court seeking a declaration that they were no longer members of the National Assembly, having defected to other political parties before the expiration of their tenure. The defendants comprise 17 senators, 37 members of the House of Representatives, the Independent National Electoral Commission, the Attorney General of the Federation, and the clerks to both houses. At the resumed hearing of the suit on Thursday, April the 18th, counsel to both parties presented their arguments to the court. The trial judge, Justice Okun Abang, then adjourned the matter until April the 30th for the conclusion of arguments. A federal high court sitting in Lagos has granted bail to Justice Rita Ophelia Jumogobia after her arraignment on charges of alleged corrupt enrichment. She was granted bail in the sum of 10 million naira with one surety in like sum. The surety must have a landed property in Lagos. The surety must also not be below the grade level 16 in the federal or state civil service. The court also ordered Justice Ophelia Jumogobia to deposit her passport with the Deputy Chief Registrar of the court. Because of the Easter holidays, she was released to her lead counsel, Wale Akone, a senior advocate of Nigeria, immediately after the proceedings and pending the fulfillment of the bail conditions or the expiration of 10 days, whichever comes first. For the second defendant, Godwin Obla, who was not present in court, the judge made an order for the issuance of summons compelling him to appear before the court on the next adjourned date of May the 15th for the purpose of trial. Another federal high court sitting in Lagos has granted the request of the Ikiti state government for abridgment of time to hear an application seeking to reverse a garnishy order on the state funds. A garnishy order allows a judgment creditor to seize and attach debts due to the judgment debtor. In 2010, the local government councils in the state were dissolved and the sacked chairman approached the courts to seek remedy for the termination of their term in office. In 2013, the Supreme Court delivered judgment in favor of the 16 local government chairmen summarily dismissed and one of the orders it made was that they should be paid the remainder of their emoluments for the term in office, a period of 15 months. To compel the state government to pay, the 16 local government chairmen filed a suit at the Federal High Court and then obtained an order Nisi garnishing the state funds in the Central Bank of Nigeria and 17 other commercial banks. The court has fixed May the 6th to hear the application seeking to reverse the order Nisi. And we round off with the report that the trial of the immediate past governor of Ikiti State, Mr. Ayo Fayoshe, has been adjourned till May the 10th and 14th. On Monday, April the 15th, the trial continued at the Federal High Court with the testimony of the 11th prosecution witness, Mr. Sonde Alade. Led in evidence by the prosecuting counsel, Mr. Rotimi Jacobs, a senior advocate of Nigeria, the witness, a bank official, told the court how the sum of 1.2 billion naira was allegedly moved by some persons back in 2014. The witness identified some of the persons to include one Mr. Oshodi, an ADC to former Senator Musili Obanikoro, and one Mr. Agbele, an aide of former Governor Ayo Fayoshi. Under cross-examination by the defense team, the witness said he was not aware of where the money came from. On the next adjourned date, the court will take the testimony of yet another witness. Former Governor Ayo Fayoshi is on trial for allegedly receiving and keeping 1.2 billion naira and another $5 million allegedly stolen from the office of the National Security Advisor, contrary to the Money Laundering Act. And that's our program this week. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to catch the repeats on air or watch via our YouTube channel. I'm Shola Sheyeli. See you next week.